just go in after the presence of God and try to pen lyric and melody and after a couple of hours it just felt like the presence of God just stopped everything and we wrote a song called The Blessing and it's straight from scripture and it's the heart of the Father over us as his kids and we're going to sing it this morning if that's okay and this is a blessing over you and your family and good your afternoon, children. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Fill up the so mouth, fill up the hearts. this this morning. Just put your hands out in front of you. Turn your heart to a place of just receiving the blessing of heaven from God himself over you this morning. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Fill up the thumbs, fill up the hearts. Come on, send them up. Come on, invite somebody in. Let them know that Pastor T is in the information center. Come on in, come on in. Come on, send them up, send up the thumbs, send up the hearts, and invite somebody in. And keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. Lord, turn Come on, send up the thumbs, send up the hearts. Invite somebody in. Let them know that Pastor T is in the information center. Come on, send them up. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Come on, invite somebody in. Invite them in.
Before I dive into this word, I need every one of y'all to do me a huge, huge favor. I need every one of y'all to please share this right now. And after you have shared it, simply type in, I shared it. Come on. I need every one of y'all to please share this right now. And after you have shared it, simply type in, I shared it. Do a watch party. Tag some people in the comment section. This word here, this prayer, it needs to go viral. We want to be a blessing to the nations today. Come on, I need you to share this for me. Come on. Send them up, send up the thumbs, send up the hearts after you've done all that, okay? I'm going to give you 30 seconds, all right? started again I'm appreciative that you all are here I don't take it for granted when people take out time in their busy schedule just to hear what Pastor T has to say and for that I say thank you and for that I'm appreciative well today I am on what I call an assignment today uh, thanks to Apostle John Zayas I believe I, I believe I'm pronouncing the last name right Apostle John he called me this morning and said Pastor T uh, we are doing what we call a clarion call and and God dropped you in my spirit to be to lead us in corporate prayer for one hour. And uh, I thank God that, you know, that I was considered. And, um, you know, I, I, prayer is something that is dear to me. Uh, I believe that if we're going to really know our next assignment, it's going to take a relationship with God and it's going to also take prayer. And so um, <clears throat> as you all are sharing this. I need you to tag some people in the comment section because I believe the world is about to be blessed today. Um, I want to, before we, before I pray corporately, I want to talk about a few things that, that God dropped in my spirit about what is going on in our society right now. And uh, many of us, we just think this is just something that it is what it is, but God said this thing is bigger than what you think it is. And I believe that the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, verse number 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, who is God conveying? Who is God speaking to? He's speaking to his people. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves. So in other words, what God is really conveying is that is that the body of believers have gotten to a place where we've become arrogant, we've become cocky, we have forgotten God along our daily activities. And so when the enemy created a mess of this world, according to the book of Genesis, when the enemy created a mess of this world, God used, used words, which is the spirit of his mouth, to bring the world back in order and into apostolic alignment according to his original design and to his original plan. And again, for scriptural references, you can go to Genesis chapter number one, verse number 26. And God began to speak to me, he says, Terrence, it's the power of the spoken word is what is gonna cause a metamorphosis to take place in our society today. Many of us think that what's transpiring now is a byproduct of man uh, messing around or being foolish. Uh-uh, no, no, no. You have to understand that even in the midst of all of this, God has allowed 
all of this to take place because I believe that God says what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get my people's attention. And, and the Bible speaks about that whenever God tries to get the, the attention of his people or wants to get the attention of his people, he always speaks to the church first. The Bible says judgment starts at the house of God. And so look at this now. So, so God began to speak to me. If someone can please just type in Job chapter number 22. If you can just type in Job chapter number 22. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pick up the verse uh, 27 and 28. I want to just before we, before I dive into corporate prayer, then, you know, I just want to just extrajeet a few texts, a few moments, okay? Job chapter number 22, verse 27 through 28. Come on. I'm going to give you 13 seconds. Someone please type that in for me, okay? So look at what he says in Job chapter number 22, verse number 27 through 28. Look at what... Look what God is saying. Look at the, through his word. Look what he says. He's in, in Job chapter number 22, verse number 27. He says, you shall make your prayer unto him and he shall hear you and you shall pay your vows. What is God saying through the right of Job? He said that the only way that I'm going to hear the prayers of this thy people, he says, there must be a place of repentance that must take place. For the Bible says, in his word, he said, he that covered the sins shall not prosper. So God is speaking here through, in, in the book of Job. He says, he says, you shall make your prayer, uh, prayer unto him. In other words, you, you shall make your petition known unto him. And he shall hear you and he shall pay, pay your vows. Verse number 28, he says, you shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. And the light shall shine upon your ways. Look at what he's saying here. So the Bible states that in Job chapter number 22, he says, you shall make your prayers unto him and he shall hear you. The word make in its original contents means to compose. It means to construct. It means to, uh, to design. Each one of us have a right. I want to say this. Each one of us, we have a right to make a decree. And the Bible says, not all, he says, when the righteous cry, he not only hear them, but he deliver him, deliver them out of all of their trouble. In these last days, God's been speaking to me these last few days. God's been speaking in these last days. God is marshalling prayer warriors who are anointed, who are called to pray to get back on their post. I believe wholeheartedly that the church has become lackadaisical. I believe that the church has become in a place, has, has gotten to a place called numb. And God says, I'm summoning my people to, uh, uh, to, to, to lift up their voice like a trumpet in Zion and begin to cry aloud. And so look at what God's beginning to say. He says, he says, it's time for us to gain jurisdictional authority over the powers of darkness in our families, in our communities, in the government, in our ministries, in corporations, in our countries, the kingdom, the nations. And God says, what, I'm, what is taking place, I'm trying to cause my people to return back to me. What did he says in the book of Malachi? He says, return unto me and I will return unto you. Many of us, we quote that scripture, we quote it as in tithe, but God says, return unto me. In other words, God says, it's time for the church to return back to their original place. What is our original place? Our original place of authority. Our original place of walking in righteousness. Our original place of walking in holiness. Again, never in all of my days have I seen the church become so numb. Never in all of my days have I seen the church become so watered down. And God spoke to me. He says, Terrence, I'm no longer winking at foolishness in this last days. He says, people are dying in the streets like dogs and the church have turned a deaf ear. Not only have the church turned a deaf ear, but the church are saying is my fault and no more. And no, what we don't understand, and that is in the book of Matthew, the Bible says we all been mandated reporters. We have been commissioned to win souls 
at an all time high. But it seems as if the more that the more catastrophe that has taken place, seems like the church has become silent. And God says the days of us being silent has come in, has come to an end. And so this and he says, what's taking place? He says, we need to get back. I just need about 10 of y'all just to type in, it's time to return. Come on, I need 10 of y'all to please just type in, it's time to return. Come on, 10 of y'all just type in, it's time to return. Just 10 of y'all just type, it's time to return. And after that, I'm getting ready to go pray and then we're going to be done. Just 10 of y'all just type in, it's time to return. Just type in, it's time to return. 10 of y'all just type in, it's time to return. Just 10 of y'all, just type in, it's time to return. It's time to return. It's time to return. Just type in, it's time to return. Where are we returning to? Returning back to our place of authority. As we begin to pr pray, remember, uh, we have to use legal rights and spiritual authority. The devil is not moved by us cracking open the Bible. The devil is not moved when we don't believe what we're praying or we don't believe what we're conveying. God has placed, and this is what we have to understand, that we have apostolic authority. God has placed the enemy under our feet and given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions over the powers of all the enemy. And then not only has God given us that kind of authority, but he says, nothing shall by any means shall hurt us. So in other words, in Luke chapter number 10, verse number 20, it says, notwithstanding in this, and he continues that the spirits are subject unto you. What does that mean? That means coronavirus. That means diabetes. That means AIDS. Anything that is trying to take control over us, trying to take over the sphere, trying to take over the atmosphere, God has given us authorization to command. God has given us authority to speak a thing, to speak a thing and declare it. What did he say in the book of Proverbs? He says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. God's been speaking to me, he says, Terrence, the church have shut their mouth. The church has become quiet. The church are not saying what I'm saying. And as a result, now you've allowed a demonic voice to speak on your behalf. But I hear God saying, Terrence, tell this thy people. It's time for them to lift up their voice like a trumpet in Zion. He says, the reason why our nations are going to hell in a handbasket, basket, the reason why our communities are suffering the way that it's suffering is because the church is no longer speaking. We're allowing demonic influence to speak on our behalf. We're allowing people to say what, what we're allowing people to speak on our behalf when we should be speaking on behalf of God. It's a whole lot of foolishness that's going on. And we, we operate in the place of fear. What did the word of God say? He says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. So if you operate in, and again, I understand, I understand obeying the laws of the land. I am in compliance of that. I am in an agreement. But I would never ever come into agreement when I, when I, take, when I allow something to dictate to me what I've been called to do. What I've been called to do, I've been called to snatch souls from the hands of the enemy. You and I, we've been called uh, to, to be witnesses uh, on all the other parts of the earth. And so and so what we have to understand that God has given us apostolic tools to work with. The first thing, the, the first tools that you and I must have when we're going to do business in deep waters, we got to first know the word. David said, it, David said it best. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so if you have no word, then whatever that's going on in society today, that becomes your measure and your portion. So you begin to now allow what someone is saying begin to dictate how you're going to move and groove. But when you understand what the word of God says, he says, I've given you authority to, to trample over the devil's head. The devil's not behind me. The devil's not on the side of me. The Bible says he's under my foot. 
So if we're going to watch this now, if we're going to engage in spiritual warfare with the enemy, if we're going to take our nations back, if we're going to bring, if we're going to put a cease and desist order to the enemy, we got to first know the word of God. I need 10 of y'all just to type in, I must know the word. Come on. 10 of y'all just type in, I must know the word. Come on. 10 of y'all just type in, I must know the word. Come on. Just type in, I must know the word. Come on. Just 10 of y'all just type in, I must know the word. <clears throat> and, and, and and not only knowing the word but we have to be also properly adorned in the word of God and, and not only properly adorned look at this now we have to make sure we put on uh, or put on Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh it's a terrible thing for many of us for us to quote God's word but we're not living God's word <laughs> I'm going to say that again he, it's a terrible thing for us to know God's word and we're not living God's word. What did the Bible say? He said, when the righteous cry, he not only hear them, but the Bible continues and said, he delivered them out of all of their trouble. And I understand that many of y'all say, well, he reigned on the just as well as the unjust. That is so true. But the flip side of that coin is, there are some things that the unjust won't get that the just will get. And I don't know about you, for the Bible says, for the just shall live by faith and i'm living by faith which means that anything that i speak according to hebrews chapter number 11 now faith is the substance of things hoped for so i got i got authorization i got authority to speak some things and i'm getting ready to see this thing turn around i've been speaking to my church prophetically been telling them about what's been transpiring i saw this coming i prophesied this and i know we got prophets now that are jumping up saying what 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 is, what, what what they feel I, God spoke to me and told me this catastrophe. This was on September the 30th. God told me this was going to happen. And I told my church, and they, they, as a matter of fact, they, they, they reminded me of what I said about what God told me. He says, Terrence, it's, it's about to happen. And I want to release this. And God even spoke to me even after Sunday. He says, Terrence, before it gets better, it's going to get worse. The reason why it's going to get worse because the church have become silent. Again, the church has become silent. And God says, we're no longer doing what God has called us to do. We're doing what we want to do. And I don't know about you all. If you mean to tell me that I have the, my opening, opening up my mouth has the ability to stay the hand of the enemy. Huh? And, and I'm quiet. No, I'm getting ready to open up my mouth. And, and I'm getting ready to scream and tell people about Jesus Christ because I know some of y'all say we're not living in the last days. Some of y'all say ain't no rapture coming. Well, you know what? I, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather be in this position. I'd rather be prepared than not be prepared. I'd rather be prepared than not be prepared. Again, no man knows the day nor the hour. Some of y'all say, well, this ain't a sign of the time. Well, you can say what you want to say. But I checked history. And we haven't seen anything like this before. So I want us to, uh, as we get ready to go into prayer, I want us to clear our hearts and minds. But the first thing that we, before we go into prayer, we've got to first make sure that God, God, uh, anything that, that, that would disconnect me from you, remove it now. Anything that would disconnect me from you, remove it. Whether it be malice, unforgiveness, whether it be bitterness, I want it to be removed now. I won't be I want to be able I want God to hear my cry uh, so if there's if there's hatred there's bitterness unforgiveness whatever what is rebellion was rejection with the stubbornness whatever it is God remove it right now because I want God to hear my cry I want God to hear because he hear every prayer but he don't answer every prayer amen so take you about 10 seconds and ask God to flush out anything that that, that will cause a disconnection that will cause a distortion in the spirit Ask God to clear your minds. Take you about 15 seconds. And we're going to pray. And I'm done after this prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, we thank you for who you are and what you mean to us. God, we thank you for just being Abba Father. We thank you for just being the Ancient of Day. We thank you for just being the Lord of our life. Even in the midst of what's going on, even in today, God, we give you glory. You say in everything, give thanks, for it is 
the will of God. And God, I right now begin to release the arrows of the Lord in our nations. Begin to release the arrows of the Lord in our atmosphere. And I come in the name of Jesus Christ in whom I serve. And I decree and declare that God, you're going to now hear our prayer. And I decree and declare that the battle that has been waged against the body of believers is about to come to an end. And I decree and declare, I place the whole armor of God upon me. I now, according to Psalms 51 and 6, I now put on the truth to cover my loins. And I put on the breastplate of righteousness to cover my heart and my chest cavity. Which means that God, I want to remove anything that will cause my heart to be cantankerous. Anything that will cause my heart to be bitter. I, I, it, unforgiveness, the root of it. I, I, I decree and declare, I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Cover my heart now in the name of Jesus. And God, I put on the gospel of peace that will cover my feet. According to Isaiah 52 and 7. I now put on the shield of faith to defensively and offensively cover my body according to Hebrews chapter number 10 verse number 38 and now only that do now I put on the helmet of salvation to cover my head so I now cover my thought process and I come against every negative thought that will cause me to give in to the tactics and the, and the antics of the enemy and as a matter of fact you said you told me to cast down every imagination that would exalt that would exalt itself I begin to flush it down I begin to pull down strongholds now in the name of Jesus and now only only do I pull down strongholds, but now I put on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, according to Ephesians chapter number six, verse number 17. And I now put on the robe of righteousness, which means God, I need you to cover me. I need you to baptize me. You uh, baptize me with your righteousness. Now in the name of Jesus, I need the glory of God, which is my rewarder, according to Isaiah 58 and 8. And I decree and declare that the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal, but they're mighty through God through the pulling down of stronghold. And we come to cast down every vain imagination and every happy thing that have exalted itself. And God, I come on behalf of America now in the name of Jesus. I speak to the spirit that's running rapid in America, the spirit of racism. I speak to it now, the spirit of, of haughtiness, the spirit of arrogancy that's running throughout through our nation's capital. And I even pray for our, our governor. I mean, even pray for our president. You told us to pray for our president, our leader, who is leader, whether we like him or not. I speak to our president, Donald Trump, now in the name of Jesus, that God, he won't make another decision without the counsel of the Lord. For I hear God saying in the book of Psalms, he says, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. And I decree and declare that the next move that our president make, it will become, it will, it will be because or a byproduct of him seeking the counsel of righteous people. Not people that benefit for themselves, but they take into account that everybody is going to benefit from this next counsel. And I come against every strategic attack of the enemy that will cause the poor to sink even lower than where they are now in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, I even come against the spirit of selfishness now in the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of selfishness that's running rampant in our nation nation's capital that's running rapid in our world where people are thinking about the rich and they are neglecting the poor and I decree and declare that God you get ready to raise up even the poor to have witty ideas that you will put them in a class all by themselves and I decree and declare that something is breaking now in the name of Jesus in the airways get into the galaxies get into the, the sphere the atmosphere get into the compounds in the name of Jesus get into our schools and our communities in our homes now and I decree and declare that God as we begin to rise up we will lift up our voice like a 
trumpet in Zion and we would begin to say it was nobody but God that is doing what's taking place. For the Bible says, he says in the book of John, he said, if you shall ask anything in my name, he says, I will do it. Now, God, I have no other sense and no other recourse to know that when I call on you, something got to happen. Not only is something happening, but something is breaking now. Even at 3.30 p.m. right now, in the name of Jesus, I hear God saying something is breaking now in the name of Jesus. I speak that God's anointing is getting ready to destroy every yoke that's, a, that's unbondage that's in our lives now. I decree and declare even those that are sick, I prophesy the healing of the Lord shall be their measure and their portion now. And I decree and declare I come to establish apostolic order in the atmosphere. I come to establish apostolic order in the galaxy. I come to establish apostolic order in the atmosphere now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare as a effectively right now, I put boundaries on the enemy and I let him know he can no longer cross this area in our lives no more. Sicknesses, I speak to you now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the body of believers are healed, the spirit filled, sickness and disease are far from the body of believers. I decree and declare that we now establish divine parameters, boundaries and borders in the name of Jesus. I come to overrule the enemy. I come to overrule every thought that the enemy will try to make us think that taking medicine will be our measure and our portion. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Whose report will we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says that we're healed. His report says we're free. His report says we're delivered. And God, I decree and declare because I stand on your word. I stand on your word. We stand on your word. And your word will not return back to us void. And I decree and declare, you say heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word is forever settled in the heavenlies. Now, in the name of Jesus, we come to nullify every diabolical decision and ruling concerning our, concerning our cities, concerning our nation, concerning our communities. We come as believers to take back, take back our rightful place, not only in the kingdom, but in the earth realm. We've been, we've been operating as punks and cowards, but I decree and declare that God, just like, like David, took Mephibosheth and put him back at the king's table. I prophesy now that the believers are getting ready to go back into their rightful place and begin to rule, to reign and dominate according to your original plan. In the book of Genesis, what you told Adam and Eve, he says, I told you to rule, reign, and subdue, and to control. And because of that, they no longer operated. But I decree and declare that we get ready to go back to your original plan and that's to operate now and I decree and declare even as I pray now for our nations for our governors the lawmakers I decree and declare now that the spirit of selfishness I speak to the spirit of Jezebel I speak to the spirit of Jezebel that will rule and dominate in our legacies in the, in the, in the house in the senate in the congress that they would think about themselves and they're not considering the people. But I decree and declare, for God, I hear you saying in your word that you've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging for bread. We are your people, God. And God, we will not suffer light. God, I've never seen us go without. And this is only a test. If it had been a real thing, God, you would have gave us further instructions. But you told us in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 7, verse number 14, if my people, which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, God, we become arrogant. We've lost our posture, which is the posture of prayer. And I decree and declare that we get ready to return. God, you've given us a chance to repent. And God, we won't ignore what you're saying. We won't ignore what you're doing. But God, we're going to take heed. as We're going to take this heed as a heed of warning that the body of believers need to return. I thank you in the name of Jesus. We take control. We take control. We take, we take authority. Mind code. We take control. We take authority over the airways. We take control over the galaxy systems, the sphere, the stratosphere, the hemisphere, the atmosphere, the realms, the regions, and the dominions according to Jeremiah 1 and 10. We come now. We dispose as a master spirits that we, and we now employ according to Matthew 26 and 53. We implore our angels 
to come out of unemployment and now start working on our behalf. According to Matthew 26 and 53, you said we all have legions, mathematically speaking, 72,000 angels that are assigned to us. And we decree and declare that the angels come off unemployment and we work now, work in our communities. I put a cease and desist on the west side of Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, and I cease and desist the spirit of murder that's running rapid in our communities now. And I say no more. This shall be a day of peace. You told us we can ask a thing. But I decree and declare it won't be no peace until the, until the righteous start crying. God, we come against the spirit of laziness. The spirit of laziness has robbed us. Have taken our things prematurely. Because we sat back with our arms folded. And we have not been doing what God has called us to do. But I decree and declare that God. You give us a spiritual swift kick. And tell us to get up. I hear Talitha Kuma rise up and do, be about your father's business. And I prophesy that the spirit of Je Jehovah Gabor uh, is, 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 is one of those that contend with those who contend with, who fight against those that fight against us. I prophesy that Jehovah Gabor rise up now. Jehovah Gabor rise up now. Jehovah Gabor rise up now. Jehovah Jehovah, rise up now. Fight on our behalf. Fight fights that we can't fight. But God, I decree and declare that our angels now work for us. Now in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare that we are about to run through troops and leap over walls. Because you are our God. The God who girds us with strength and make our way perfect. I decree and declare that we come to make a prophetic announcement to the enemy that enough is enough. And I thank you that something is shifting. I thank you that something is shifting now. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. I need about 20 of y'all just to type in shift this place, God. I need about 10 of y'all right now to just type in shift this place right now. Come on. 10 of y'all right now. I'm, I got about 10 more minutes and I'm going, I got 10 more minutes of prayer. Just, tell them, just type in, shift this place, God. Come on. Come on. I need about 10 of y'all just to type in, shift this place. And we're gonna, and I'm going to continue this prayer. My God, I feel your presence on this line, God. I feel your spirit, God. Seven more people just type in, shift this place, God. Six more people. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. I feel Jesus in the room. I feel Jesus overshadowing me. Mind, I feel the spirit of Jesus overshadowing me now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, God. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Do me a favor before I finish this prayer. I'm, I'm going 10 more minutes strong, hopefully. 10 more minutes. I need every one of y'all to do me a huge favor. Share this again. I know you may have shared it once, but share it one more time. I need every one of y'all to share this one more time. And I'm going to give you 15 seconds. I need every one of y'all to please share this again. And after you've shared it, just type in, I shared it. And I'm going to pray a little bit more and I'm done. Come on. Come on, I need everyone to share it again. Come on, share it again. And I'm done. Come on, 
How do you declare that God, that you've given your people another chance to get it right? We come to make an announcement that God, we will no longer be quiet. That God, you will raise us up and we will tell people that Jesus saved. We will not allow our shortcomings to be the reason why we keep our mouth quiet. We come against the spirit of guilt. We come against the spirit of shame. And I decree and declare that this is the believer's finest hour to snatch people from the hands of the enemy. And I decree and declare that God, you get ready to raise us up and the people that, I, that we are called to, to snatch from the hands of the enemy, draw them to us now. Draw our family members, our friends, people in the marketplace, people in, in corporate America. God, let us be a voice that will snatch people from Satan's pit now in the name of Jesus. And we disapprove and prohibit any demonic interception and interference or resistance in the name of Jesus. We resist every satanic contention intentions now in the name of Jesus. We're no longer negotiating with the devil. We come, the Bible said the kingdom of God suffered with violence and the violence taken by force. And God, we come to take our peace back. We come to take our communities back. We come to take our children back. We come to take our financial state of being back. And I come against every spirit of poverty that is wreaking havoc in our communities now. I prophesy now that the spirit of wittiness shall be our measure and our portion now in the name of Jesus. God, I decree and declare that the believers are about to rise up and shine now. We're about to lift up our voice like a trumpet in Zion. No longer shall we operate in fear. For you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a love power and of a sound mind. God, I hear you saying, Terrence, playtime is over. Tell the believers, get their houses in order now. Hey. Yes, God. We decree and declare that the spirit of the Lord is upon us. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of divine counsel. Supernatural might. Supernatural knowledge. And the utmost, the fear of Jehovah. Let the spirit of fear, the spirit of reverence, hit our homes, God. We no longer reverence you, God. We say and do anything in your presence, God. Let the spirit of fear and reverence return back into our natural homes. Let it return back in our spiritual houses, God. Let the weight of your glory return back to the house of Israel. Return back to the house of Bethel, the place where God dwells. We won't reverence to return back, God. Let us, God, let us, even what we say that come out of our mouth, God, every idle word, God, let your people, let your people return. For I hear God saying, return unto me, and I will return unto you. We want to return back holiness, God. We don't want to just seek you for houses and for cars. We want to seek your face because you're God. We want to seek your face because you're God at all night. He said, We don't want fame. We don't want fortune. We just want you. We just want you, Daddy God. Oh, man. Said he under the bush. When the righteous cry. When the righteous cry, we're crying out, God. We're crying out, God. Hey. The righteous are crying. We're crying on behalf of our nation. God, I repent on behalf of our leaders that make decisions, God. And they've been making decisions for their own selfish gain. I repent on their behalf, God. Hey. Listen, uh, let our, our, our apostles and our prophets, our evangelists, our teachers, and our pastors return back to the place of reverence in you, God. 
We don't want a position. We don't want fame. We want you. We want the weight of your glory. We want healing to return back to our churches. We want the power of God to return. Hey, I just need about eight of you all just to type in God. It's to, I will return. Come on. Eight of you all just type in I will return. Come on. Come on. Just type in God. I want to I will return. Come on. Hey. I decree and declare. As you're typing that, I must continue. We come to resist the wiles of the devil. All of his antics, all of his tactics. We come to resist them now. For the Bible says in the book of James, resist the devil and he shall flee. And I decree and declare that the enemy's been hijacking our peace. He's been hijacking our joy. But I decree and declare that the days of hijacking has come to an end. And I prophesy now that the peace of God shall be our measure and our portion. As a matter of fact, for I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to give you peace that will surpass it all understanding. All turmoil, all hell is going around. But I hear God said, I'm, I'm unleashing peace now. For whenever the Lord says peace, there will be peace. I prophesy the peace of God shall be our measure and our portion. You're not going to lose your job. You're not going to lose your house. But I prophesy that the sustaining power of God will be your measure and your portion. You will not be afraid to go to church. But I decree and declare that you operate in a place called bonus. I decree and declare. For I seek after the counsel of God, not the counsel of man. And I decree and declare nothing shall be missing. Nothing shall be broken. I prophesy now that while we are in a place called frozen, I prophesy now I release in the airways, in the galaxy, in the hemisphere, in the stratosphere, I release supernatural miracles <coughs> to take place now. I prophesy supernatural overflow. Hey, okay, I said this Sunday, but I'm getting ready to say it again. I prophesy now that, that a virus is about to take place in the computer where our credit scores are about to go up. I said this on Sunday, but I just heard God say, Terrence, say it again. I prophesy that a virus is about to go into the computer system. It's getting ready to cause us to be approved of some things that we were denied months ago. I prophesy that a virus takes place in the computers now. And I decree and declare that we get ready to see a, a prophetic turnaround. I prophesy a prophetic turnaround now. I decree and declare a turnaround is about to take place. I prophesy now. A virus is about to hit the computers. Go on and press delete now. We put a halt to every distractive, every spit of disturbance, every destructive measure. For this reason was the Son of God made manifest that he would destroy the works of the Lord. I come against every distraction that will cause you not to believe the word of God in its totality. I prophesy now. Every disturbance, every satanic letter, every satanic call, every satanic email, we send it back to the sender now and will not return. I prophesy now in the name of Jesus a prophetic turnaround. Let, the, let our credit scores take a supernatural jump. Things that we were denied a months ago, I prophesy now. It's about to take place. I hear God say there are three people. You get ready to experience a supernatural turnaround. If you receive it, just tap in, I receive it. Come on. If you receive it, just type in, I receive it. Come on. I hear God say, we as believers, we're about to prevail against satanic inhibitions. Every, we get ready to overrule the, the enemy. All spheres of limitations. We decree and declare that all invisible and invincible walls are about to be destroyed. I hear God saying they're about to be destroyed. Every plan of the enemies are about to be destroyed as a byproduct of this virus. In the midst of all of this, I hear God saying in Romans chapter number 8, all things work together. Even what we call bad. It's about to work for our good. I hear God saying, Terrence, tell this thy people that the righteous are about to shine in the midst of this tragic situation. He said his people are about to come out on top. If you believe you're about to come out on top, just type in, I'm coming out on top. Come on. If you believe you're about to come out on top, 
Just type in. I'm about to come out on top. Prohibitions. We come against it now. All spheres of limitations. We bind it now. We come to execute divine judgment against satanic and demonic activities. And we war in the spirit like Elijah and Jehu. I prophesy that there's a Jehu's anointing that's being unleashed in the atmosphere. A Jehu's anointing is being unleashed in the airways. What's a Jehu? Jehu came to take down the Jezebel system. And we come to take down the Je we come to take down that Jezebel system. I release a Jehu's anointing. God ain't give you the how you go? If you can't run with the footsman, how you gonna run with the horseman? You better tell God to equip you. You ain't running, we ain't scared. We were we like Ford. We were built for this. Sandy Kataba. We were built for this. Hey, we come to we come to we disapprove. We come to nullify. We come to dismantle. We come to cancel. We come to forcefully oppose any satanic operation that's been going on in our life. We come to shut it down. We come to shut the enemy down. I need about 10 of y'all just type in, shut them down. Come on. 10 of y'all just type in, we come to shut them down. Come on. We come to shut the enemy down. Come on. Just type in, we come to shut the enemy down. Come on. Just type in, we come to shut the enemy down. Come on. Come on. Just type in, we come to shut the enemy down. Come on. Come on, come on, just type it. We come to shut the enemy down, and I'm done, y'all. I'm not sort of that shit. We worship you, our Lord. Yes, God. You are worthy to be praised. We come to disapprove, we come to shut them down. We come to nullify, we come to dismantle, we come to cancel. Forcefully oppose any satanic operations, every maneuver, every spit of manipulation, intimidation, subversion, and intimidation, domination. We come to fall out of agreement. I prophesy that we fall out of agreement of every assignment of the enemy. I hear God saying, Terrence, unleash this. The enemy's assignment has been canceled. I'm going to say it again. I hear God saying, tell about eight people, tell them that we'll receive this, that the enemy's assignment has been canceled. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We give you praise. We come to draw out our sphere and stop the enemy in his tracks. We come to stop the enemy in his tracks now. We come to we come to fall. As a matter of fact, I hear God say, your enemies are about to become, they're about to turn on themselves. My enemies, your enemies, they're about to turn on them. They're about to become their own enemies. But I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to allow you to have peace. There's been somebody that's been operating in a place called a uh, 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 disturbance. The enemy's been disturbing your peace. But I hear God say, I'm getting ready to give you peace. He's, allowed, he's about to allow your enemies to turn their backs. On them, oh, oh, turn his back, and they're about the spirit of confusion is about to be unleashed on your enemies. I decree and declare that my angels, according to Matthew 26 and 53, are about to become my persecutor. He's about to become, he's about to become my bailiff in the spirit realm. He's getting ready to arrest every demonic force of the devil. And I decree and declare, even for this disease that has hit the land, arrest it now. God, you hear me when I call you. So God, I need you to arrest because your people, we're not going to suffer. We're not going to suffer, but they're operating in fear. Let their fear, let their faith override their fear. Now, I prophesy that our faith is getting ready to override our fear. Now, in the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the name of Jesus, as we conclude this prayer, God, we thank you that this prayer, we seal it in the name of Jesus. That we seal this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. We seal this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus. We thank you that God, we're about to live our greatest life. I prophesy that we're about, we have stepped into the greatest season of our life. 
we will no longer operate in a place of confusion, but I speak a spirit of solidarity in our thought process now in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory that the believers, that your church, God, this is your church. You want your church back. And I thank you that your church is returning back to authenticity. Your church is returning back to holiness. Your church is returning back to righteousness. We thank you. We give you praise, God. We thank you. We celebrate what's getting ready to take place. And it's in the name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we're about to come out on top. In the midst of this chaotic situation that's going around in the world, the believers are about to come out on top. I prophesy that this thing now hits our spirit that we're about to come out on top. Amen? This Pastor T. I pray this prayer bless you. I pray it bless you. Amen? If, if, if you feel there to sow into uh, my life, Again, you feel led. Only if you feel led, inbox me, and I'll give you all the information. Again, this is this is nothing, you know. That no one asked me to do. I just, if you feel led, if you feel led, I'm not begging you. If you feel led, inbox me. And say I want to sow into your life, Pastor T. Inbox me, and I give you the information. Amen. But I say this to you all in my conclusion. These are the times of the believers. I say this to you all. These are the times of the believers. These are this this is when we ought to shine even the greatest. This is when we ought to shine the greatest. This is when people need to see Jesus operable in our lives. This is the time when people need to see Jesus operable in our lives. This is that time. We, we, we shouldn't have the same conversation as the world. This is when our faith must speak on our behalf. This is when our faith need to speak on our behalf. This is when your faith needs to stand up over fear, over the calamities, the tragedies. Yes, obey the laws of the land. Wash your filthy hands. Glory to God. Don't cover your mouth when you don't cover your mouth with your hand. <coughs> Do that. Glory to God. If you know that you're sick, stay home. Stay away from people. That's how we going that's how this thing gonna stop. Glory to God. But we can't operate in fear. That's what the enemy does. If we allow the media, it's been many a times. I'm closed on this. It's been many a times when they have, as a matter of fact, it happened last week. They told us that we about to have a major snowstorm. Oh, man. They, they told us it was about to be a major stay home. Go stock up. And do you not know, it didn't even snow that day. It, as a matter of fact, if it did, if I can remember, if it did, I think it only, it was only flurries. Man, the it's a spirit of control. I, I preached on last my last lab, I believe it was my last lab. There's a strong spirit of manipulation, spirit of seduction. There's a strong spirit of seduction that has hit our land. And one of the greatest ways in the spirit of seduction is to lure you, to control you. You got to know the plan of the enemy. Media is trying to control us. Tell us why do they why you think they got a five-day forecast? Every day the five-day forecast changes. Man, if you're so sure about what you just get a five-day forecast on Sunday and let what you predict happen, let it let it come to pass. But they have to give you a five-day forecast then because they're not sure. But the Bible says one thing that we ought to be sure of, and that makes sure that our call and our election is sure that we're standing on a solid foundation. I thank you all. Man, God was on this line today. I felt the presence of God. And I, I decree and declare. That we're about to shine Us as believers This is about to be our greatest time We're not going to operate in fear We're not going to let Yes, be in compliance Hear what I'm telling you Be in compliance Wash your filthy hands Wash them dirty hands Glory to God But man, don't let the devil trick you This is our greatest season Facebook Live Hear what I'm telling you I know what I heard God say Apostle John This is our greatest season this is the greatest season where we're about to see people giving their lives to Christ. And we as a church, we cannot keep our mouths closed. You got to open up your mouth and tell people that Jesus Christ saved and him he has been crucified. Tell them about Jesus. Tell God to give you that boldness like Peter, but give you the wisdom of Solomon. Tell God to give you the boldness like Peter, but give you the wisdom like Solomon. And I promise you, 
okay, I heard God say this and I'm done. I just heard God say, this shall be the season. This shall be the hour. I just heard God say, this shall be the hour where I'm getting ready to raise up people that's been faithful, that's been consistent, especially those, those, those small churches. I hear God saying, this will be your finest hour. You will see increase like never before. He says, he told them, he says, call a fast. Call, make a clarion call for righteousness. Make a clarion call for holiness. Once you make that clarion call, walk therein, says the spirit of the living God. We're about to see people, mass numbers, over flood our sanctuaries. So to the point where we're going to start turning people away. God says, I have warned those mega leaders. And I have told them, return back to holiness, return back to righteousness. But because their voice was seemingly so big that they feel like they can operate however they want to. But I heard God saying, tell them, woe unto those leaders that have mishandled my pulpit. That has mishandled the platform that I gave them. And I hear God saying, this shall be the hour. This shall be the season for the no-namers. This shall be those that have been faithful for 10 and 15 years. And you have not seen the manifestation in the natural. I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to do my greatest work in this 11th hour. I hear God saying, because of your faithfulness, because of your consistency, because you didn't punk out, because you didn't bail out. I hear God saying, get ready for the overflow. Make sure that you're doing like Habakkuk chapter number two, that you've written the vision, you made it plan. So when the people come, you have somewhere for them to operate, for somewhere for them to move. People that are coming in to come and enhance you don't turn them away because you're operating a place of intimidation god says know them by their spirit know when i have sent them ask god to upgrade your level of discernment so you will not operate in a spirit called intimidation and i decree and declare that this shall be our greatest season this shall be our greatest hour i hear god saying this will be the greatest hour for the no namers i hear god saying this will be the greatest hour, the greatest season for the no-namers. For those of y'all that's been trying to get it done, I hear God saying, I'm getting ready to send people that has the means to help you get to where you need to get to. I hear God saying, they're here. They're looking for tax write-offs. They're looking to be a blessing to somebody, but they want to make sure you got a vision. The reason why, it, the reason why what you've been believing God for has not come to pass is because you have not written it down. And God says, write it down. The tablets, write it on a tablet. Put it on your computer. So when they come and say, why should I give you a million dollars? You can show them X, Y, Z, A, B, C. This is why I need a million dollars. This is why I need a million. This is why I need this. This is why. This is the reason why I need this building for one dollar. This is why I need to operate. I need this daycare. You have to have a plan. It's time out for us shouting and dancing, speaking in tongues. But we don't have no manifestation. Faith without works is dead. I hear God saying, now it's time to work. But make sure you got a vision. Make sure, because the Bible said the people perish because there's no vision. In other words, you don't, you, you, you're blind, leading the blind. Amen? This Pastor T, y'all. If this blessed you, just type in, I was blessed by this Pastor T. Come on. If you was blessed by this, just type in, I was blessed by this Pastor T. Come on. If you were blessed by this, just type in, I was blessed by this Pastor T. Come on. Come on. If you were blessed by this, just type in, I was blessed by this Pastor T. Come on. Come on, come on. If you were blessed by this, just type it. I was blessed by this, Pastor T. Chicagoland area 
Someone please be my personal moderator. We will not have Bible class this coming Wednesday. But I need everyone, I need those of y'all that are watching me on this live. Again, our church is clean. We have a cleanup crew. We just sanctified that place, made it clean. I need someone to please be my personal moderator and just type in to Washington Boulevard at two o'clock this coming Sunday. You need to be there. I got a word for you. There's a, there's a move of God that you need to experience this coming Sunday to Washington Boulevard at two o'clock. Come on, I need someone to be my personal moderator and just type in the address, come on. Come on, someone be my personal moderator and just type that in. Come on, just type in the address, to Washington Boulevard Oak Park, Illinois, at 2 o'clock, this coming Sunday. Just type the four address, two Washington Boulevard, the time, type the time, the, the information, type all that in there for me, please. All in one, one setting. There is something yeah. Yeah. about that name. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. It's all about Jesus, y'all. name Jesus. Come on, just type in something about that name Jesus. Thank you, Tasha. Just everybody, just type in something about that name Jesus. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I'll be here tomorrow, y'all. Don't miss, don't miss this. Don't miss this move Sunday. But watch this again. Share it again. Let this live go viral. Let this live go viral. Let this prayer go viral. Again, thank you, Apostle John, for the call. Amen. Come on. Come on, y'all. Let's let come on. Sit up the thumbs, sit up the hearts. I'm done. I'm gone. Like you. Because you're Christ. Uh, you got 13 more seconds. I'm gone in 13 seconds for real. Yes, God. 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 Christ the Lord, the cornerstone, the foundation. Yes, God.